Hey, thank you again for tuning in to another short devotion. Today we are going to be talking about, are you mad, bro? And the verse I want to focus in on for this comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. It's a verse that's very familiar. It's a verse that you've probably heard. Matthew 5, 23 reads, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering well all this time i've been reading that verse and it taught me that the bible feels very strongly about things like love and forgiveness and unity and that these things are important to god and they should be embraced and um held as a priority to us but recently I took the time to read this verse in context, read this verse with all the other verses that it was surrounded by. So when you go and you look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26, it really does give you a lot more intensity, a lot different feel than when you read um, verse 23 and 24 alone. Um, listen to the Word of God in Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 21. You have heard that the ancients of old were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother is guilty before the court, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, and whoever says to his brother, you fool, shall be guilty enough for hell fire. Therefore, okay, when you see the word therefore, look back, see what it's there for. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go be reconciled to your brother and then come back and present your offering. It continues by saying, make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the road so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and the officer throws you in prison. For truly I say to you, you will not come out of that prison until your debt is completely paid. So both examples put the responsibility of reconciliation on me, not them. Even though I cannot control what other people do or how they respond, I can control my ability to be gracious, to be humble, to be forgiving, and to do anything else I might possibly be able to do to open the door to reconciliation. Now, when reading this verse, it's hard to see if the expectations of the scripture is for me when I am the plaintiff or to me when I am the defendant. And I believe that the reason it's hard to tell whether this is intended for the plaintiff or the defendant is because it's intended for both. Whatever situation I find myself in, it's my responsibility to do what I can to make things right. And before I can even worship God, before I can even serve God, it is my priority to go and try to make things right with this person that there's a conflict with. These verses serves as a warning that there's actually punishment directed towards the believer who is unwilling to do this. Because you have to think about it. The issue with Jesus is not whether or not this other person deserves your forgiveness. The issue is that Jesus knows that the Father is angered at the Christian who freely receives the grace and forgiveness that Jesus provided by his death and sacrifice on the cross, and we refuse to give that same grace and forgiveness to another person. And, according to Scripture, even more offended that we forget to get 
we refuse to give it to another believer. This insults God to the highest because think about it. When you choose not to forgive somebody, you're telling God that this person's actions towards you is more important and more insulting than your sin was to God. And this tells us why we cannot serve God, that we cannot worship God, that we cannot celebrate God, because as long as we're not forgiving somebody else, we are insulting God and Jesus' sacrifice on the cross by behaving as if we should be more offended with that person than God should be with us. Because if God is willing to forgive and show kindness and grace to us in our sins, then how can we not forgive and show grace to others? Because there is no way that their sin is more insulting to us than our sin was to God. There is no way that our debt to God can be smaller than any other person's debt to us. So let us practice what the Lord's Prayer says when it says, Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And as we share that grace and forgiveness with others, then we will find ourselves in a better position to serve and celebrate the God who first gave that grace and forgiveness to us. We love you. Thank you for watching. If you got something on your heart you need to talk about, pray about, please look us up here at First Baptist Honey of Path. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.